In this tutorial, we will learn how to create isometric game environments. Isometric artwork is an incredible style that makes 2D art look three-dimensional. It's used in games such as Age of Empires, Hades, and Into the Breach, for example. So I'll be using Photoshop, but any free alternative such as GIMP or Krita will work fine if you wish to follow along. So without further ado, we're the Blackthorn Brothers, and this is how to make isometric game environments. First of all, we're going to make the process a lot easier and faster by downloading an isometric grid. Make sure the background is transparent, and then open it up inside of Photoshop. If you need more space, don't hesitate duplicating the grid and placing it alongside the other. With that done, we're going to begin with the absolute basics. Let's make a cube. We'll simply grab a basic round brush and then begin painting the faces of a cube, helping ourselves with the grid lines. Then I'll paint some of the sides in a slightly darker gray to give some shading. You'll immediately notice the difference between a normal cube drawing and this isometric cube. Whereas the cube using normal perspective appears to grow smaller as it recedes in the distance, the isometric cube does not. Now if I import this basic isometric cube into a game engine such as Unity, for example, I'll quickly sketch out a scene using it. For example, I could make a couple turrets and a tiny map, changing color and the order in layer in the sprite renderer component. So if you wanted to make a sort of 2.5D Minecraft, you might not need much more than a variety of simple isometric cubes with slightly different texture patterns. With that said, let's try and build slightly more complex environments. First of all, almost all environments, monuments, and characters will be structured through extremely simple shapes. If you can draw an isometric cube, Good. But now it's also time to practice drawing an isometric sphere, again using the grid lines as reference. Practice drawing a couple spheres like I do right here. Next you can make cylinders, filling two squares with oval shapes, then joining them with a pair of straight lines. For cone shapes, simply make an oval on one of the squares, then have a pair of lines join in a single point a few squares above. So I suggest you pause the video here and practice drawing a bunch of simple shapes varying in size, length, and angle. This is key because everything else we'll be making is simply based on the manipulation of these primitive shapes. For example, let's say we wanted to build an isometric castle. First of all, I can grab some reference for inspiration, and then I'm going to simplify my whole mindset. I'm not drawing isometric towers, I'm drawing cylinders. I'm not drawing ramparts, I'm drawing cubes. Same for roofs, it's just a bunch of cones. For windows, you're making small ovals that follow the grid lines. I recommend your first isometric artwork to be relatively small. Don't create an enormous fortress just yet. Let's first nail the entire process. So this brings us to details. You can grab a small brush and paint in small cracks, tiles on the roof, erase messy lines, and add little bumps and texture. These details are cool to have, but a solid structure is far more important all the cool details in the world won't save a badly structured piece. And remember, structure is just basic, primitive shapes manipulated in all sorts of ways. So for trees, that could be a sphere for the foliage and a cylinder for the trunk. For a house, that's another cube with a pyramid and perhaps an even smaller cube for the chimney. For a small human, that could be a sphere for the head and a small cylinder for the body. Once you have that nailed, you can keep it as simple as it is. This sort of simplistic style with the right colors and gameplay could be extremely stylish or you can add a few details and bumps to your clearly established structure. Okay, very quick pause guys to let you know about the brand new community that we've just built. It's called the Game Dev Brotherhood. Noah, what is it about? The mission of the Game Dev Brotherhood is simple. We want to provide you with a tight-knit family of game creators that are going to push you forward and really just motivate you on that journey of finishing and launching video games. Because one thing Liam and I have realized by not only building the Blackthorn Pro YouTube channel, but also the Game Dev Rocket course, is that sure, all the technical knowledge and skills about how to make games is super important. You're gonna have to have that. What's even more important is the community because that's what's gonna keep you motivated to keep on learning, to keep on improving. So that's why the central focus of the Gainer Brotherhood is community. We're going to have the theme of the month and we're going to be going on live Zoom calls with you guys and teaching you about that theme. You're going to be able to stop us whenever you want, ask us questions, interact with us. It's basically like a live mentoring session. On top of that, we're going to be inviting an expert and you're also going to be on that call and be able to ask him questions. So that's the learning cell things. Now for the action cell things, we're going to be organizing a monthly game jam. We're going to be putting what you've learned to the test. And we're then going to go on live feedback sessions, play your games, give feedback, and that's the way to improve. 
Cherry on the Cake, you'll also have access to the Game Dev Foundations course, where we teach you the basics how to use Unity, program in C Sharp, as well as the Game Art and Animations Foundations course, where I'm gonna teach you about designing game characters, making environments and animating everything. Okay, so if this sounds interesting, guys, you can click on the link in the description. We're offering a seven day free trial so you can have a look around and see if this is for you. We really hope to see you inside. Okay, now let's add some color. I'll usually create a base layer with simple flat colors. Again, I can use my reference pictures for inspiring color palettes, but more on color theory in a future video. Next, I'll pick a light source. For example, let's imagine the sun is shining from over here. I can now darken the flat colors on the sides facing away from the light source, basically making shadows. And I can brighten the sides of my artwork that are facing toward the light source. This reinforces the 2.5D feel of our isometric artwork. Finally, and of course this is optional, I'll take a slightly textured brush and paint over my colors, giving the design a bit more texture. I recommend you search for your own collection of textured brushes. For example, you can search free Photoshop brushes in your browser and you are sure to come across a bunch of high quality tools. Okay, now that we have a cool environment piece, it's a shame it's floating on its own. So I can of course add a few trees, but what we really need is a map. Now you could simply create a large expanse of grass or go down the into the breach route and make a small isometric map. It's basically just a cube or rectangle which you can easily make by following the grid lines. Then you could add a few details if you like or keep it nice and simple. It's also a matter of style. You might want to make a game with no outlines or a mix between artwork that has outlines and some that doesn't. Generally, outlines will make the piece stand out more, so it can be a cool idea to have elements that can be interacted with, such as troops in your army or destructible terrain actually have outlines, whereas pieces that are just there for decor or storytelling not have any outlines. You could also make the outlines a little more subtle by giving them some color. So instead of completely black, make it so it's a darker shade of whatever color the fill of the outline is. In this case, we could make it a dark beige, in this case, a darker gray or darker red, for example. Now, if your game is going to be grid-based and strategic, don't hesitate adding the isometric grid lines on top of your artwork. I personally like the look. The sky is the limit with isometric worlds. Of course, you could make an isometric adventure, a character exploring caves and digging for treasure like in Spelunky, or it could be an epic city builder or an intricate puzzler. If you want to practice isometric artwork without necessarily being in front of a screen, you can buy isometric paper. It could be a great way to sketch out structures and ideas and practice that all important concept of simplifying even the most complex environments into basic shapes. If there's one takeaway from this tutorial, it would be that practice manipulating basic shapes. This is true for isometric artwork as it is for normal perspective. If you have a little experience creating art, don't start with cathedrals, start with tall skyscrapers. Or assemble a bunch of 3D objects in a Unity scene, for example, and then practice sketching that. This will be an immense skill on your game art journey. Okay, thanks so much for watching, guys. Subscribe and like the video, it's a huge support. And see you soon for the tutorial on how to create isometric game characters. Cheers.